So lately we've been in the Old Testament, and the scripture that we had on tap for this morning would take about 10 minutes to read. So I decided to go uh, with something that's closer to the theme for this day, which is welcoming in saints and honoring the saints who have departed. So if you are interested in following along, uh, in your Bible, I looked it up. It's uh, page 226. It's Hebrews 12. And I'm going to read it twice since it's only two verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And now as I read this a second time, will you close your eyes? And therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. You're welcome to open your eyes. So it is perhaps like you on a day that we celebrate all saints. Perhaps like you, I have many people in my heart today. But today I think specifically of two people. And their names are Phyllis and Sydney. One is a teenager who lives in rural Iowa, and the other is a saint who has gone on ahead to eternal life. Phyllis and Sydney were members of my last congregation, and they always made up an odd pair. Sydney, the teenager, was boisterous and chatty. She used to come into my office unannounced on Wednesday afternoons and talk my ear off for 45 minutes. It made me never want to go back to middle school again, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'm glad I got through that. So that was Sydney. To know her was to love her. And then there was Phyllis, who was the exact opposite personality-wise. Phyllis was about 70 years older than Sydney. She was a retired tax preparer and a brilliant flautist. She was meticulous and organized and deeply private. And Sydney chose Phyllis to be her confirmation mentor. Now something about this tickled me and it tickled the church to see these two together. I think it's because if you saw them together, you might conclude that Sydney and Phyllis made something of an odd couple. So I'm going to show you a picture of Sydney and Phyllis. <laughs> At that point, Sydney was approaching about six feet tall, but you still need three, three inch heels. You know, it just. <laughs> Don't you love that orange carpet, too? My gosh. It was literally older than I am, it really was. So what do you think? There's one tall and one short, one older, one younger, 
one a raging extrovert and one an introvert. They went on and on, the differences between those two. But I tell you the truth, and maybe you can see this in the picture. I tell you the truth, that those two loved each other. They loved each other. I think whoever wrote the book of Hebrews wanted their audience to know that we are never really alone. We're never alone. We might feel abandoned and lonely and out of place. We might feel that when we try to move forward in a better direction, there's no one to support us, no one who understands what we're really going through. But what if that sense of being alone, of being abandoned, is actually just an illusion? I think the chances are good that someone knows what we're going through or at least can get in the ballpark. Someone has the wisdom to share. Someone has space enough in their schedule, in their life, to give us space to explore what we're going through. If that isn't what church is for, then what in the world is it for? If that's not what church is for, that what in the world is it for? Whoever wrote Hebrews claims that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, people who have followed in the ways of Jesus, generation after generation after generation, or just people who have faced tremendous challenges, or heck, even ordinary challenges, <laughs> which are hard enough. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by people, whether living or dead, who understand what it is to run a race with perseverance, who understand what it takes to take up their own crosses for the sake of the joy that is set before them. We are never, ever, genuinely, truly alone. I want to tell you another story about Phyllis and Sydney. And it happened on the last day of Phyllis's life. So this was during confirmation. I must have been afterwards, actually. I drove Sydney and a few of her fellow confirmation students to the nursing home where Phyllis was. And we entered Phyllis's room, and we sang a few of her favorite hymns. And I remember that Phyllis was awake and her eyes were glowing. Have you ever seen someone's eyes glow? Whether it's their wedding day, but sometimes you see them glow at the end of their life. Phyllis's eyes were glowing. And so we did our thing, and as we were leaving, Sydney asked me if she could stay. And I said, well, sure, just text your mom when you're finished. And Sydney stayed in that chair, quietly. <laughs> quietly. Next to Phyllis's bed for the rest of the afternoon until her mom came to pick her up for dinner. And that night, Phyllis slipped away quietly. On the day of her memorial service, Sydney stood up at the pulpit, and I think those same shoes, <laughs> trying to hold back tears. And that 14-year-old gave one of the best eulogies I've heard in my whole life, all in honor of Phyllis, one in the great cloud of witnesses. I tell you the truth, it's not just those other people who are saints. It's not those other people only. It's all of us. It's you and me. It's not just that someday, hopefully someone will light a candle in our honor and memory and say our name. It is that today, in fact, this very day, Sunday, this very day, there is somebody who is looking to see how we are running the race. 
Maybe it's our kids or our friends or someone at the grocery store. Maybe it's someone in this church who needs someone who can give them space or needs a smile of welcome, who needs encouragement for this stretch of the road. Being a saint doesn't mean you live your life perfectly. If that was the case, we'd all be out. <laughs> That's not the point. The point of the cloud of witnesses, and I think their collective witnesses, live for God's sake. For God's sake, live. So saints, somebody is looking to all of us to see how to run the race. So may it be for the sake of joy. Amen.